Hi, I'm Dan. This is my UK Civic, and I'm today's Haltech Hero. When asked about their fondest car memories, people often admit to having a strong emotional attachment to either their first car or the car they learned how to drive in. That is true for Daniel and his EK1 Honda Civic. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say it, but uh, this car used to be my wife's car. <laughs> when I started driving this car, I fell in love with it, so uh, I ended up taking it off my wife and she wasn't so impressed. The first thing Daniel did with his Civic was turn it into a stereo car. But what exactly is a stereo car? Stereo car is, uh, is uh, pretty much a drag race car, but for music. So uh, you're racing someone with, with your doof doof, so to say. The loudest car wins. The car was actually quite successful and earned Dan some hardcore doof doof auto salon fame. Yeah, I got a lot of trophies from, from this car being a stereo car back in the day, but I grew tired of it and the, and the scene changed, so the car had to change as well. And change it did. A car full of neons, heavy subs and stereo equipment metamorphosized into a sleek, lean racer. But hang on, what's this? There's still a stereo in the car. It's, I can't have to keep it back at its original roots. I can't, I can't get rid of it. It's not, a, it's not an actual car until it's got a stereo in it. So. After blowing up the factory engine, Daniel upgraded to a newer B-series, which also didn't last very long. Eventually, a more robust K24 found its way into the Civic. I chose K-series over B-series because it's a newer platform engine. Uh, so I know it was only going up from here. So I knew people were going to start tinkering uh, pretty much from when I did. Uh, and now they're pretty much in every second car has got a K-series. The swap from B-series was pretty easy with this K-series. Uh, it's very similar when you're doing a D to B-series because the engine layout's the same. Uh, the beauty about doing a swap like this, um, pretty much everything's on the shelf. So because these cars are so common and so sought after, uh, you can pretty much get mounts from five different companies. You can get so many different intakes, so many different exhausts, so many different parts. Uh, I think that's why they're such a common car to do. With the swap done, Dan was keen to get in some seat time at a local track. All right, so I took, took the car racing to Eastern Creek. Uh, I've taken it to Wakefield, I've taken it to the drags. Um, I've taken it to roll racing. I found that it, what it was lacking was uh, top end. So I had a lot of mid range for a car that was NA because I had trumpets on it. Uh, but I had to move the car to the next step. The next stage started with giving the engine some much needed boost and ended up with the car pretty much the way it is today. Uh, so the engine is a, is a stock K24 block. Uh, cams are stock. Uh, the only thing that's not stock in this engine is the oil pump, head studs and uh, valve spring. So the intake's a skunk center feed intake. Uh, fuel rail by K-Tune, rocker cover by K-Tune. Uh, it's got a four core custom radiator in it. Uh, it's got a 1320 turbo manifold and uh, Aeroflow turbo and lines. The boost, all 25 pounds of it, comes from an Aeroflow 6662 turbo, helping the K24 produce in excess of 300 kilowatts. All noxious gases shoot straight up through a hole in the bonnet. The exhaust out the bonnet is quite funny. Um, my fabricator didn't want to do it, but I was kind of in a rush and I just wanted the car kind of semi done. Uh, so I just hold sawed the bonnet, which he wasn't too happy about and he had to make some pipes that came straight out the bonnet. So I know he's watching this and I know he's not happy. So. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. I'm trying to fit a three inch exhaust uh, down past the cradle and underneath the car. It's very, uh, it's very challenging when you've got a turbo manifold coming off the side. So um, I'll have to get a custom dump pipe made up if I want to do any circuit racing. Just as with any build, time was Daniel's biggest foe, causing the build to drag on. Uh, finding time to tinker with this car uh, was a problem. So it was very hard when you work uh, five days a week uh, and weekends sometimes. So um, just getting any time on it over the weekend or even at night time was a blessing. Much like the rest of the build, the fuel system follows the same keep it simple stupid principle. Uh, so in this car, I've got, a, um, I've got an Aeroflow triple hanger tank. So that's got three 525 fuel pumps in there. Uh, I've got a K2 fuel rail a turbo smart fuel ring. I've got 2000 cc injectors to start off with, uh, but I'm gonna be adding a set of 1650 cc injectors for secondaries. Fuel wise on this car, 
I'm going to be running ethanol. Uh, I won't be doing flex fuel or anything on this car because this, this will pretty much just see the track and the garage. So uh, ethanol is probably going to be the best for this car. The six-speed transmission comes from a DC5 Type S. Daniel opted for the Type S over a Type R version due to its longer gear ratios. Uh, it was late Saturday night when I, I first turned this car over. It was probably two or three o'clock in the morning. Uh, and when I first hit the key in this car, it, it, nothing happened because the battery was dead. So I was, was kind of gutted. But uh, after I jump started the car and finally got it going, uh, I don't think the neighbors were too impressed at three or four in the morning, but I, I, I was pretty chuffed, but I had no exhaust on it. So loud, but I was really happy. From the outside, the car looks fairly tame. But the interior, while not over the top in its execution, definitely reflects Daniel's personality. All right, so I've done most of the work myself on this car. Uh, everything's bolting, so uh, steering wheel's bolting, seat belts, seats bolting. Um, done the interior kind of semi-standard, so it's still got the factory dash pad. It's got the top factory half of an EK door, uh, and I've just got the custom bottom door cards that I made at home myself. Uh, I've got a K-Tune shifter. Uh, it's pretty common, it's a, it's a short shifter, that, it's a common swap for most K-Series. Uh, I've got K-Tune shifter cables, and I've got a BWR Hydro handbrake for Motocarnas. Since the K24 uses a drive-by-wire throttle, Daniel chose an Elite 2500T ECU, coupled with an IC7 display dash and a whole array of sensors. So I've got a whole bunch of sensors. I've got oil pressure, fuel pressure, oil temp, coolant temp, air temp, so all your pretty normal sensors that you would run on a car if you wanted to run engine protection or you just want some monitoring. Boost control is handled by a three-port Howtech boost heat, which is in the engine bay. Uh, also have a 44mm turbo smart wastegate. Uh, I won't be doing boost by gear yet because I'm not doing any circuit racing, uh, but I've got this little button here so I can do some uh, any lag launch control at the drags or at roll racing. So far, pretty much just your standard track day setup, right? Uh, something you don't see every day uh, in a race car is a stereo, um, because it's not a real race car, unless you've got a stereo. Now let's hear it. The windows go up and down, um, thanks to this little guy. So this guy uh, is a ratchet, so uh, I tried a whole bunch of different window winders and I didn't really like anything. So. Uh, I've tried something out of the ordinary and I think it actually looks pretty good. The suspension features IBAC coilovers on all corners, while a 330mm brake kit from StopTech slows the Civic down. The wheels are 17x8 Enki RPF ones all round and they're shot with Yokohama AO50 rubber. So I do have a spare set of seat brackets here because I will be running a passenger seat in this car. Uh, I have had a lot of help building this car throughout the year, so I want to take people out and show them what this car can actually do. Uh, and I also want to scare the out of them, which will be pretty funny. Dan says he built the car to enjoy it. And if the enjoyment scale went from 1 to 10, we reckon this Civic hits an 11. Uh, if you're thinking of building a car like this, uh, just build this car for yourself. Build whatever you want. Don't listen to people. Don't listen to what anyone has to say. Um, I've had a lot of haters over the years say, no, you can't do this, don't do that, don't do this. At the end of the day, uh, you're building this car for you, so no one else. Uh, so you're putting your time, your money, your blood, sweat and tears into this car. So remember, this is your car and you've got to be happy with it.